Welcome to my extremely small work area. One of the challenges with trying to do a video series like this is that I have a very small work area. So sometimes it might be a little difficult to see what I'm doing. I'm going to have to stop and refocus that type of thing. Try not to let Megan miss January of I think 2015. Try not to let her distract you too much. What this part of the Value Hobby Easy Stick 60 series is really going to cover part one is some of the things that I'm going to do to the inside of the fuselage and outside of the fuselage, main fuselage section, uh, prior to really starting the assembly. Now this series is not going to cover every single step of the assembly because it's an ARF for first, first of all. It's not difficult to do. The instruction manual is pretty adequate for those that have built an ARF or two before and even for a beginner it's not too bad. What I'm going to show is some of the things that I'm going to do to this thing outside of what you would see done um, in the normal instruction manuals because of several things because it's a ARF and glue joints need to be reinforced in my opinion and I'm going to be installing a twin cylinder engine and because of the fact that glue joints need to be reinforced I'm also going to make uh, another external firewall that goes on to the front of this one that's made out of a little bit better plywood material makes it thicker and I'm gonna glue that in place so that's why I've got a nice chunk of looks like quarter inch light ply I don't have any you know thicker ply or the non light ply but for what I'm gonna be doing this will be more than adequate so let's get right to it well, as I had unwrap this fuse for the first time see what it's really going to look like. So I just felt a ridge of covering here as I that needs to be sealed down. So all edges are going to need to be hit with a heat gun, not a heat gun, an iron to get all these edges down. Now I mentioned the firewall. Uh, see there's this nice lip here. I mean this firewall doesn't look too bad, it's pretty thick, but first thing is that it has holes or blind nuts put in it that I'm not going to be using. So I'm going to have to tap those out and then I'll be cutting a new firewall and installing it in place specifically for the mounting holes on my SATA 100 twin. In addition to that, you take that hatch off might be kind of hard to see in here. There is a landing gear plate under here. Now what I'm probably going to do is I'll probably have to cut some of this out because what I want to do is I want to reinforce the landing gear section also. I've seen on several occasions where this, if you have one bad landing, this can rip out pretty easily. So again, the blind nuts used there are subpar uh, as some of the hardware is. So I'll be replacing those blind nuts with probably just the big screws with lock nuts on them and uh, reinforcing that plywood area. The first thing I want to do here is I've got my Gorilla wood glue here. The first thing I want to do is I want to go through every glue joint and just put a lot more glue on every joint that I can possibly reach. And I mean every joint. So this is going to take me some time to do, but I just want to show you that reinforcing every possible glue joint in here is only going to help make a stronger airplane. Because personally I don't trust the glue that they use on these things and I barely trust the wood. So. This is what I'm going to do now, and uh, when I get the new firewall cut and drilled and about ready to epoxy into place, I'll start another video. Okay, so I've got the... Uh, <coughs> I did re-glue these joints now, and I was not at all shy. I'm not sure if you're going to really be able to see this because of the camera angle here, but I wasn't shy at all. I went around every single glue joint that I could possibly reach and I just squirted a bunch of wood glue in there and then just smeared it into the crease with my finger 
and uh, that's basically what I think requ is required to be done just to help strengthen this up because like I said I just really don't trust the glue joints on this airplane okay here I'm going to show you the method I use to extract these blind nuts from the firewall here I just find a screw that's similar in size it doesn't matter if it threads in all the way it just really needs to thread in a little bit and then I just drop it out now it may take a little bit of wood with it that's okay because I'm going to be putting a whole new plywood on or a plywood former on the front anyway but you see how easy those came out and if I were to clean these things off you'd see that the teeth are pretty damn short compared to ones you can get at Lowe's Home Depot okay so here's the front of the firewall the stock firewall here's the new firewall that I just cut or not new but additional firewall I transferred the marks from it and on this side I transferred the circular cutout which I'll make and you can see that this is how this is going to go in here so I'm going to have a really thick firewall and it's going to have a lot more glue joints here but I needed to do this for the mounting screws on my uh, Sato FA100T clearly aren't going to line up with these <clears throat> so I'll have to go and get some uh, new hardware some 832 screws and blind nuts from Lowe's and once I get this drill for throttle and the all those things, fuel lines. Actually, I think the last time I had to do the fuel lines out through the top of this area here because uh, the twin engine has a Y that goes because it's dual carb, so there it has a T fitting here. So I think I end up having to drill the holes from here to come up and connect like that as opposed to coming straight through the firewall. But uh, so this is how this is going to go on. I just need to get this thing drilled and then we'll epoxy it in place, and you'll see that I'll even overlap this covering here with this firewall and the epoxy so it'll really be a nice solid surface there for that big engine to hold on to.